Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. in this town because I've got to leave. Maybe you got to go, cousin. But that money ain't going nowhere. I don't get it, mister. Nobody beats me ten straight hands less than he's cheating. I wasn't cheating. What do you see to get out of here, partner? He said I was cheating. Probably is. You got a difference of opinion here. And that ain't worth having no shooting over now, is it? He called me a cheater. Oh, well. Well, now, sir, might you just entertain the notion of maybe telling my friend he ain't no cheater? No. I'm afraid I just can't help you, Wyatt. Your name, Wyatt? Now, that could be a possibility. I could draw in you. You'd kill me. Then that would make it 11 straight times I'd beat you, fair and square. Think maybe you can entertain that notion now? Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think you're cheating. Thanks a lot. Let's go, Wyatt. All right, Virgil. Uh, Wyatt. Yeah. You draw really as fast as they say? Uh. You want to see it? Just a demonstration. Want to see it again? <laughs> Madge Crawford, if you ain't a sight for so long. Yeah, well, too many more of them kind of card games, and that is the only thing that's going to be sore. Oh, Sergeant, I just got my knack back with the cards again. That fella in there couldn't prove I cheated him. I'm sure glad to see you anyway. You got the dangest habit of showing up at the bestest time. Well, I didn't track you down just to get you out of a gambling mess. No? You remember the Baltimore kid? The Baltimore kid? Sure, I remember when he first come to Texas. He was dressed to kill and ready for action. Couldn't ride a rope, but he sure handled a six-shooter good. A little better than you did. Yeah, well, I, I got this telegram yesterday. Huh? The Baltimore kid being held in Waco jail on murder charge. Town in ugly mood. Kid needs help to assure he gets fair trial. Better come at once. Signed a friend. Kid in jail for murder? Ah, that don't sound possible. I know it's got to be a big mistake, George, but men have been hanged before by mistake. We got to get to Waco and see that the kid gets a fair trial. Yeah, it does say the town's in an ugly mood, don't it? Yeah, and that might call for one more ranger. Say, we can swing by that old folks' home and pick up Jason, huh? Oh, come on, Nash. Let's face it, even if we do pick up Jason, it's just the three of us. Of course, we're all rangers, but we're so far over that hill, I can't even remember seeing the hump. You scared, Judge? No, I ain't scared. I'm just... I'm just cagey. Maybe you're forgetting the last time we all got together. 
All right, granted. I was wrong to face that man head on. But I learned, we all learned to use our wits. We cleaned up that town, remember? <laughs> we did with a heap of luck, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm willing to risk my luck again, especially when it comes to helping a former ranger. You got me that time, Sergeant. Yeah, Brazos! Brazos! <laughs> <laughs> Nice, you a cagey old coot, coming in that saloon and calling me Wyatt. Suppose that fella hadn't a went for it. Or why didn't you just call me Herb? <laughs> Come to think of it, that would have been a whole lot more fitting. That's right. any man whomsoever who knows why this couple should not be joined in holy matrimony, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Do you, Jason Fitch, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to love and cherish from this day forward? Sure. I, I mean, I do. And do you, Louise Murphy, take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to love, honor, and obey? I do. Will you please place the ring on her finger? Ring? Oh, yeah, the ring. Place the ring on her finger, please. No, 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 Mr. Fitch. Now do you understand, Reverend, why I insisted on a rehearsal? I certainly do. Well, that's what's got me so nervous, all this rehearsing. No, Jason. But it's true. If you're going to tie a horse up to a rail, you don't lead him in first to see if the wood's strong enough to hold him. Why don't we just do it now and get it over with? I told you, dear. My mother was married on the 15th, and it's always been my wish. Now, that's tomorrow. Surely you can wait one more day? Well, at my age, that ain't a cinch bet. Besides, Jason, we're going to have our stag party tonight. Yeah. Are we through rehearsing, Parson? I'm Louise. Oh, yeah. I think we've rehearsed sufficiently. Good. Then all you stags out on the front porch. You ladies keep that way by staying away from our wild doings. Reckon it's time for refreshment? Reckon so. Three months old corn. That aged, huh? Ah. You can sure tell the stuff they take their time with. When do you figure we should start the entertainment? Well, how about now? Whiskey and women, they go with this sort of thing. Well, here it is. Direct from France, Europe. And that thing she's wearing is called a negligee. You don't say. 
feels kind of worn. Well, that's because it's been handed down through the family. We're all bachelors. Who's coming? Don't know him, but one of them's riding a mule. A mule? <laughs> hey, Jason! George, is that you? Yeah, and I got Sergeant Nash here with me. Hello, Jason. Well, I'll be. You come from a wedding, didn't you? Well, I don't know about that, Jason. We got a message for you. Brazos! Brazos! I'm trying to understand, Jason, dear. I truly am. I know it's going to be hard for you, Louise. But once a ranger, always a ranger. And when I heard that word, Brazos... And that I don't understand, Brazos. What does it mean? Well, it's a sort of a code word. It means ranger in trouble. It means drop whatever you're doing, no matter how important, and come a-running. I see. And whatever you happen to be doing was marrying me. Louise, we ain't got much time. I have to go. Man's got to do what he's got to do before he settles down to a life of luxury. Luxury? Well, I figure marrying a pretty little thing like you make me the richest man on earth. Oh, Jason. Time's a wasting, my love. Do you promise to wait for me? Of course, but you go on now, before the tears start. And be careful, my love. Don't be careful! Don't worry, my dear, I will be. horses, then we can look for the jail. to hold it now. They, they took the kid out and lynched him the night before last. Uh, I'm afraid you boys missed the fun. What happened? Well, a bunch of drovers broke into the jail, dragged the kid out, and they hung him right in the loft here. Oh, oh it sure drew a big crowd. Yes, near the whole town looked on. It did, huh? And nobody tried to stop it? Stop it? Oh, no, sir. Not after what he done. Just what had he done, fella? The kid and his gang held up the Fargo office here and took over $10,000. The kid never rode with the gang. No. Oh. And he didn't take money that weren't his, neither. No, oh, he did a heap sight more than just hold up the Fargo station here. He killed the town marshal and his deputy and the ramrod of a trail herd that was here in town. It was the drovers from that herd that took him out and lynched him. Without a trial? Well, once the facts was known, who needed a trial? Why don't you just give us some more of those facts, Shorty? Yeah, we want to know exactly what happened here to our friend, the kid. You, your f f friend, you, 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 you're all f friends of the kid? Anything wrong with that? No, 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 no. I, I, I just remembered that I have a mountain of work to do inside. If you're looking for more information, just go down there to the newspaper office. The man will tell you down there. All right, come on. What can I do for you? 
Well, howdy, man. Judge Amos Polk, ain't it? Ex-judge. Thanks to your efforts. What the devil are you doing here? Devil's own bidding, I'll wager. Well, I've gone straight. I'll have you know that this newspaper business is a legitimate enterprise. Well, it better be, because we come to get some facts. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, about the Baltimore kid. How'd you know that's what we come for? Because I'm the one that sent for you to come. You? Yeah. Well, after the, after the kid and his gang killed the marshal and, and the others and the rest of them run off, somebody got in a lucky shot and dropped the kid with a scalp wound. I was the first one to reach him, so I took his wallet. Well, that's like you. Just to identify him, that's all. Well, anyway, they took him to jail, still unconscious. Matter of fact, he was unconscious right to the end. He never did come to. Yeah, well, that still don't explain why he sent for us. Well, it's all right here. Here's the kid's wallet, his badge, newspaper clippings about the old days. And here's this note. In the event of my death, my last wish is to be buried as a Texas Ranger with some of my former comrades in attendance. Please get in touch with Nash Crawford. He'll know what to do. And your address is right there. And when I saw how ugly the town folks was getting, why, I sent the wire for you. Well, I apologize for thinking ill of you, Amos. You've done your best. We got here sooner. Yeah, they'd have had to fight to take him. Yeah, what's done is done. At least we here to see if the kid's last wish is granted. I reckon the body's over at the funeral parlor, ain't it? Well, not exactly. You better come with me. for his murderous ways. All the work is. That's a lie. Of course it's a lie. I can recall a hundred brave deeds that man done. He was a real gentleman. And a gravestone big enough to record half the good things the kid done. I wish I'd have known him. Now here he lies in Boot Hill with a marker like that. I don't know how the rest of you feel, but I could stand a good stiff drink of whiskey about now. <laughs> Mind the time the four was rode down the pickers after them engines? Hmm. Here, and the kid was right out there in front, like always. Hmm. No, no, no. Jason. Feels kind of empty. I'll go get another one. Jason. The bar is over this direction. Yeah, I'll point you. It's due north. Oh, thank you, George. Bottle of peas. Another bottle. And another, another bottle. Those are beautiful words, my friend. Yeah. Hmm? 
Jason. Jason. Grief can play tricks on a man. Where that drunk at the end of the bar looks just like the Baltimore kid to me, too. Pour us another round of drinks. Never mind more drinks, you dang fools. Grief ain't playing no tricks. That there is the Baltimore kid. Is this a place where they're going to give us free drinks? It sure is. Hey, Miss, how about that coffee? Coming right up. Coffee? Who said anything about a coffee? Now, don't you worry, kid. It'll do you a lot of good. Coffee never did anybody any good. You promised me some liquor. We said drinks, now. We didn't say what kind. Look, kid, we got to get you in shape. Kid? Yeah. How come you call me kid? <laughs> That's your name, ain't it? Yeah, no, nobody here in, in town knows of it except one old lady, girl. We know it, because we know you. Now look here. Don't you know us? Maybe we swapped out of some saloons together or something, maybe? We was all together, but far from swamping out saloons. Think back about 20 years. 20 years? <laughs> I, I can't think back one year, much less 20 years. Don't you remember being a ranger? How do you know I was a ranger? Because we was rangers right alongside you. Yeah? Don't you know him? Sergeant Nash Crawford. Nash? Remember me? Jason Fitch? Oh, come on. I'm Gentleman George. Well, that's a fact, kid. We're all back here together again. For heaven's sakes. It is a fact. Or else I'm drunker than I've ever been. <laughs> Still feel kind of shaky. Yeah, well, yeah, give me that. He's shaping up real good. I'll go get some more hot water. You hold that. I'm sorry you fellas had to find me in this kind of shape. Well, I'm just glad we did find you. It's a long time since I left that gun shop in Baltimore to go west. I remember we couldn't figure out how come you knew so much about guns. You just showed us all them medals. Well, I, I used to be able to hit the head of a nail at about 50 feet. Now I'd shoot my foot off. <laughs> what happened, kid, after we all broke up? Oh, I marshaled for about 10 years. Oh, yeah, we all done some of that. It was uh, easy getting those jobs with my reputation, you know. And then when that started to fade, so did I. Pride, I guess. I, I started hitting the bottle. And not like most drunks, to forget the past. I, I got to forget the present. Don't worry, kid. Jason went out to buy some new clothes. And when we get you all spruced up, nobody's going to recognize you. And we'll go over to the mayor. The mayor? Oh, sure. He's the only one that can change the, the gravestone legal, you know. Oh. You don't want folks thinking the Baltimore kid is buried there. Oh, I sure don't. Listen, Nash, and you too, George. I want, I want you to know how much I appreciate what you fellas are doing for me. You do, huh? <laughs> George? Mm. What do you think of these Yahoo? I think he's getting downright sentimental. You want me to douse him? <laughs> no, you don't. Now, give me that. <laughs> 
Hey, hey, you give yeah. me that. Yeah. Spill it all over the place. Nobody's going to be able to recognize me because I sure couldn't recognize them. Well, you look great, kid. Yeah, I remember how you looked back in the old days, kid. Just great, like right now. Thanks, Jason. You felt we shouldn't spend all this money. I don't need a gun. Well, we wouldn't want you running around town with a six shooter and your gun belt. You'd be half naked. That's what you'd be. It does feel kind of natural. I wonder if I could still use it. <laughs> well, it don't matter. We just wear them for balance. Took mine off once and toppled over. <laughs> well, you just in time. Mayor's waiting for you over to my office. Lead the way, kid. Me? Just like always. Like always. Come on. Your Honor? to present four of the finest Texas Rangers that ever served our fair state. Well, I'll declare. Gentlemen, this is a pleasure. You know, I had no idea why Amos got me down here. But I want to tell you that I am always proud to meet any ex-ranger at any time. This is Gentleman George Agnew. Mr. Agnew, how do you do? Uh, Jason Fitch. Pleasure, no, sir. Nash Crawford. How do you do, sir? And the Baltimore Kid. Very happy. I beg your pardon. The Baltimore Kid. At your service, sir. Amos. This must be some kind of a joke. Oh, it's no joke, Your Honor. This here is the genuine Baltimore Kid. That man that drove us lynched was an imposter. Well, I find that difficult to believe. Amos, didn't you find his identification in that wallet? Well, the faker had his wallet, but the fact is it weren't his. No, sir. It was mine. I must have lost it. Now, I can vouch for these three men. And if they swear that this was the real Baltimore kid, then he is the real Baltimore kid. Oh, well, I'm not doubting you. I, I just find it... <laughs> well, I'm surprised, to just say the least. Well, a lot of folks are going to be surprised when they learn the truth. That's how we want you to help us, man. Authorized Amos here to print an official story. Then get rid of that, that lying gravestone up on Boot Hill. Of course. By all means, of course. Well, so you're the Baltimore kid. Yes, sir, that's me. <clears throat> I can't tell you how relieved I am. Uh, personally, I mean. You know, you was always one of my big heroes. And when I heard you'd gone bad, <laughs> well, it was a terrible blow. It's mighty kind of you to say that, Mayor. I wish I could have stopped that rotten snake from using my name. Yeah, well, I bet you would have, too, if you'd only been here. Well, I wouldn't have exactly been standing around doing nothing. <laughs> we sure thank you, Mayor, for your cooperation. Not at all, gentlemen. Not at all. I thank you for restoring one of my heroes back up onto his pedestal. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> hey, Amos, we better get started on that story, huh? Oh, right, right, right. A Baltimore kid. You know, for years, that was a name that brought a glow to every heart in Texas. And it will once again, after Amos prints that story. Say, you know, you're turning up here like this could be a godsend to Waco. A godsend? Exactly. Waco is a mighty mean town. Why, we get the roughest, toughest trail herds in the West through here. It takes a mighty strong lawman to handle the problems here. Uh, uh, kid, I think the stableman's got uh, a horse. Hold on, me. Nash. Uh, I, I don't think the mayor's quite finished. No, sir. Indeed, I have not. You know, we can't go out and hire just any man for Marshall. No, sir. We've got to have a name that those drifters and gunmen respect. Why, half the success of this job is respect. Not the one you got to have respect? Oh, lot to respect. For a dead man. He was one of the three got killed in that robbery. Oh, Mayor, that's very interesting, but we... Yeah, we got to be moving on. Just a minute, please, gentlemen. At ease, men. We must show the mayor a little respect. I like that word, respect. Well, if anybody's got respect, it's the Baltimore kid. And I mean the real Baltimore kid. 
Now, looky here, Mayor. Sergeant, uh, now, the mayor has been kind enough to hear us out and cooperate, right? But if he's getting at what I think he's getting at... Sergeant, uh, I believe I was next in command to Captain Hayes. Yes, sir. What was that you were saying, sir? That Waco needs law and order. And it takes a man of great stature to fill the job. I know of no man who's ever lived who has greater stature than the Baltimore Chief. One, two, three. It's back, I guess that does it. Twenty-four hours a dollar apiece. I thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. well, Sarge, I guess we're free to go. Are we? Yeah, we don't owe anybody in this day out. You sure about that, George? What about the kid? Don't we owe him? Don't forget, in a lot of ways, we're responsible for his reputation. Right. Now, let's be reasonable, Nash. We came here, we helped the kid get back his name, but we got personal business to attend to. Me? I gotta get married. And that's as personal as you can get. <laughs> yeah, and I got a red-hot poker game I'm raring to set in on down in Del Rio, Texas. Sure. We all got our own lives. But did you ever think why? I'm alive because the Baltimore kid one time charged a pack of Comancheros and sprung me from a certain trap. Yeah, I guess you're right. I wouldn't be around today if it hadn't been for the kid back in my play down in Austin. You looking down the business end of two six-shooters alone. Yeah, I got lost one time out in the Badlands. No food, no water. The captain stopped sending out search parties for me. But the kid didn't give up. He showed up with a canteen and a sack full of beef jerky. Tasted like Delmonico steaks. <laughs> yeah, all right then. You say we're paid up in this town, but are we? The kid went and took out that badge as town marshal. Well, it's like the mayor said. Reputation is half the job, and the kid's got a reputation. Yeah, half the job, George. Half! That means five out of ten will back down if he faces them. But what about the other half? Let's face it. We got a one-day reformed drunk wearing new clothes. Now, are them fancy clothes going to help him with some bucko who never heard of the Baltimore kid? I reckon not, Sergeant. And how do we know he's giving up the booze for good? Well, the hard fact is, I gotta talk to the mayor. Tell him to send for somebody else. And until that somebody gets here, the kid'll have to fill in. All right, we'll fill in with him. There's deputies. Whatever you say, you're the boss, fella. Well, they ain't gonna be forever. But if we stick with him through this, he can... Well, he could just get his confidence back. And he could get himself killed, too. Yeah. Come think about it. What chances he got? Well, what chance we got for that matter? All right, a slim chance, I'll grant you that. The kid's puffed up right now, and that could be dangerous. We'll have to do our job. That is, me and his, without letting them know. Well... Well, I come over to say goodbye. First edition's all printed and will be out in two hours. Well, Amos, you can add a few lines to that story. Yeah. Oh? Yeah. Print that the new marshal will have three X-Rangers as his deputies. Yeah. You mean the three of you are staying? Yeah, we'll explain it to you later. Right now, we gotta find the kid and tell him. Well, that shouldn't be hard to do. He's celebrating his new job. Where? Over at the saloon. What? Hey, kid. Excuse me. Well, welcome, welcome. I want you to meet a very dear friend of mine. Yeah, never mind the dear friends. What about the old ones? What about your promise to us? Promise? Yeah, that you wouldn't go drink no more. I'm not drinking. I was just chatting with my lady friend. Maybe we did jump at conclusions. I'm afraid you did, Sergeant. Uh, you must realize that it's my duty as Marshal to check up on the various saloons in town. Maybe I could go along with you. I thought you were all leaving. Well, the truth is, kid, we wanted if you'd do us a favor. Why, any time, Nash, any, anything, you just name it. Well, we'd kind of like to stay on a while and, you know, get that old feeling back again. Yeah, sort of bask in your reflected glory. Be your deputies. Deputies? Of course, you'd just be doing us a favor. We wouldn't be much real help. 
You sure to have to carry us, you know. <laughs> Say no more, Nash. It's done. As of now, you are my official town deputies. I'll swear you in myself. And be sure you put that in the paper, Amos. <laughs> Forget it. All right, you better get at it. Huh? Oh, all right, right away. Oh, uh, I'd like you to meet uh, Miss Katie Flayland. Katie was the only one who took an interest in me when I was working here as a swamper. I've had a hard time convincing her that I'm that same fellow. Oh? That was mighty nice of you, miss. Oh, the kid always was sweet and kind, even when he was drunk. <laughs> well, those days have passed. <laughs> now, men, uh, shall we retire to my new office and get organized? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Good. Until later, dear Katie. Goodbye. Nice meeting you. So long. Hmm. Mighty fine little office. Ah, they've got rooms for us upstairs and everything. Oh, not a bad looking set of hardware. I think I'll check it out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Here, Jason. Mm -hmm. oh, wait a minute. Oh, here, Marshal. Next time, just hand Jason things. Out in the broad daylight, if possible. Sorry, Jason. Yeah. That's all right. Which brings us to a point we better discuss, kid. Now, we're none of us as fast as we used to be. It might help if we sort of planned a little strategy. What do you mean, strategy? Mm -hmm. Just in case of trouble. I only know one way to face trouble. Head on. Well, that's maybe all right for... A young buck, but with an old elk, he stay alive a lot longer using his brains instead of his antlers. <laughs> well, there she is. Front page news. Well, that's nice, Amos. Very nice. <laughs> and I mentioned you three, too. Yeah, that makes me feel a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. Kid, we got business to talk about. Later, Nash. Later, I want to read this. I passed them out all over town. You ought to heard the folks buzz. <laughs> Sound like no bust to me. That's three of the Bar X outfit letting off steam. Is there a law against shooting off guns in town? Well, there ain't there ought to be. That's right. It's pretty certain that those three fellows are breaking the law. You all stay here. I can handle this myself. I'll go with you, kid. No, I, I said I could handle it by myself. Why don't we all go? I just want to give them a little first-hand practice. Well, all right, on one condition. Take off your gun belt and leave it here. What? If there should be trouble, which I doubt, at least they won't shoot an unarmed man. I don't want to be responsible for you, Nash. Well, that's mighty thoughtful of you. We'll have to do it my way or not at all. All right, kid. Lead the way. That's enough of that. You holster those guns now. That don't do, Coppinus. Come on. Well, you better get out of the street, Grandpa. You liable to get trampled. You see this badge? I'll be doggone. You must be part of a Wild West show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the marshal of this town, and I'm ordering you to holster those guns and stop disturbing the peace. Oh, you're ordering. That's right. And before you start arguing, it might be a good idea for you to find out just who you're facing. What well, do tell? Uh, who might that be? Some call me the Baltimore Kid. Now, you've been warned. Have we been warned? You now, wait. Wait just a minute. Let me say one thing, young fellas. A long time ago, I learned it sometimes helps to glance up toward heaven before you get into gunplay. Hey, what is this? One an old-time marshal? The other an old-time preacher? Heed my words now. Just one glance up. It can make a big difference. Well, I'll tell you. Old oh, man, if I was going to glance up, it'd be just to say a little prayer for you two old... Yes, sir. A little reflection helps, don't it? Especially when you think about the fact it's 
the Baltimore kid you'd have to outshoot here. Never had the chance, Nash. All right, fellas, watch your play. That's better. Now go ahead, have a drink if you want. But just keep things quiet. Cowboys already? You didn't even watch? Hey, kid. We seen you in action so many times it's kind of getting to be old hat. They back down when they thought about who I was, right, Nash? Yeah, that's right, kid. Old Nash tried to use religion on him. But in the long run, it's like I said. When there's trouble, you have to meet it head on. Yeah, there's no denying that now, kid. If there's trouble, we gotta meet it head on. Making your rounds, you see? Yeah, I like to make sure things are quiet. I'm surprised to see you by yourself. Where's all your deputies? Oh, I guess they're taking an afternoon nap. This job is kind of a strain on them, understand? Yes, of course, huh? <laughs> of course, there's no need. Excuse me, Your Honor. Pardon me, friend, but just what do you think you're doing? Huh? Have me some target practice. That's what I'm doing. I want you to get out of the way there. I'm sorry, I can't let you do that here. Now, if you take a ride outside the city limits, you can practice all you want. You telling me I got to leave town? That's what I'm telling you. Well, now, let me tell you where you can go. You can go. <laughs> recognize me, huh? That's right, friend. I'm the Baltimore kid. And I'm telling you to holster that gun. Yes, yes, sir. And then I want you to pay the man for the lanterns you broke. Yes, sir. Expected to find you here, George. Well, I was just sitting in there to be sure that that was an honest game. And is it? It must be. I won the last five straight hands. Why don't you come over and have a hand? If you say it's honest, I believe you, George. You do? <laughs> well, I'll just go out there and check it in again, Marshal. <laughs> What will it be, Marshal? Milk, please. Cow's milk? Have you got any other kind? No, sir. Then that'll just have to do, won't it? Yes, sir. Well, how's it going, kid? Fine, fine, Miss Kitty. Just Good. I, I hate to say it, but uh, you're looking kind of pale. Oh, well, we've been very busy. We've been working too hard. Indoors all the time, too. Now, why don't I come around late this afternoon and take you out for a drive? A drive? Um, I, I want to get acquainted with the countryside. Well... Your company would be a pleasure. Well, all 
all right. Why don't you pick me up a little after four? I'll do that. Good. I'll see you then. How are you, Nash? Hey, Miss. You're looking pretty grim. Well, I've just been worried lately about keeping up this sham. I ain't sure it's fair to the kid, nor to the town, either. Well, did you talk to the mayor about it? Yeah, just now. He's going to send for a big-name marshal to take over. Trouble is, it'll be at least a week or more before he gets here. So I reckon we'll have to hang on a while longer. I think it's wonderful the job you all been doing with the kid so far. Well, it ain't so wonderful. The kids deserve it. All we're trying to do is give him some confidence again. <laughs> Well, now, when a man starts to squire a girl and she's not half his age, looks to me, Nash, like uh, you gave the kid all the confidence a man will need. Waco, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I'm the town marshal here. Yeah, this here is the Baltimore kid. Uh, now, I want you to stay here to be nice and pleasant. Just as long as nobody breaks the rules, I'll do my job to keep it as pleasant as possible. Feel free to call on me any time, any hour. We'd better call on you in the next five minutes, because that's as long as we're going to be here. Oh, then I'm interfering with your refreshment time. Well, uh, go ahead and enjoy yourselves, folks, and... Do come back and visit us again sometime uh, as soon as possible. Madam, may I show you the way? Stage reader, too, Amos? A fella just got off the stage. Fellas usually do. But, but this fella, I think I've seen before. I think he's one of the gang that robbed the Fargo office. What? Well, I got a good look at his face dur during the gunfight out here in the street, and I'm almost sure it's the very same man. But where is he now? He went into the saloon. Show me. They're at the end of the bar. Uh-huh. Well, now, that's mighty interesting. Well, are you gonna arrest him? I don't know. If he stays around town, I'll at least question him. You go on back to work, Amos. I'm going on in there and keep an eye on him. You were a fool to come here. You shouldn't take a risk like this. Lady, I took a whole lot bigger risk than this to get that 10000 out of the Fargo office, and I want it. What makes you think it's here in town? None of us have it. And the paper says that one on that kid or whoever he was when they shot him. Well, what do you mean, whoever he was? You knew him, didn't you? Knew him? Listen. Now, me and my boys, we're minding our own business down by the border. And we pull a few jobs, you know, we run a few cattle, but uh, nothing big. And this, uh, this Yehu, he shows up in our camp, claims to be the famous Baltimore kid. Why, he even got his old uh, Ranger badge, a few clippings to prove it. So we believe him. Well, then he tells us about his Fargo job, and uh, everybody voted to go along with him. Just because he said he was the Baltimore kid? Lady, 
You know, most of the men that ride for me, they shoot good, but they, they, they don't uh, think so good. Uh, you tell them that a famous man has a plan for a job, they figure it just got to be good if, if he thought it up. So they voted to throw in with him, and I agreed. All right, well, you made a mistake. But you are making a bigger one by showing up now. I don't think so. I'm just a passenger on a through stage, and besides, I figure maybe you could tell me about that money. Me? Mm. Why me? Well, now, once we agreed to throw in at that fake Baltimore kid, he told us to meet him here in Waco. So? Well, he said if there was any hitch in our plans, we could get in touch with him through you. Well, yeah, but he had me fooled, too. I thought he was the Baltimore kid. Did you? Of course. <laughs> well, maybe you did. Then again, maybe you didn't. At any rate, <clears throat> he, uh, he had that money pouch on him when we left the Fargo office. And then we had that fight out in the street. You remember that? Now, I figure that during that fight, he could have slipped the money to you. Oh, well, that's ridiculous. He was busy fighting for his life. Well, what happened to him? Well, I don't know. Everyone naturally assumed that one of you got away with it. Well, not everyone. <laughs> I mean, not, not the one that's really got it. But you, you may be right. It could have been anybody in that fight. The smoke was thick. There's a lot of confusion. I remember. Remember? Hmm? Who was it reached that body first after we lit out? Oh, uh... It was the newspaper man, I think. Yeah, well, well, what's his name? Amos Polk. Amos Polk. Well, then he could have grabbed the pouch and just slipped it in his office. Yeah, yeah. Or like you say, it could have been anyone on the street during the fight. Yeah. Well, here's my stage about ready to pull out. Well, look, I'm, I'm really sorry I couldn't help you. It seems you're out of luck. <clears throat> no, no, it's this town the one's out of luck, because I can round up my boys by tomorrow, and then we'll be coming back here. Oh, but that's very dangerous. Well, the, the real Baltimore kid is Marshall here now. Well, Joe, I saw him. I ain't no old man going to keep me from getting that money. See, we're going to tree this town, and then we're going to start with that newspaper man and anybody else who was in on that fight. So if I was you, I'd stay off the street tomorrow morning, because uh, it ain't going to be safe. Well, I'm off for the dust, huh? Well, Nash, keeping out of the sun? Hello, kids. Come on, make the rounds with me. No. I don't know, kid. Say, Ed, it's a nice time you got here. We think so. You plan on staying long? No. I'm just passing through. Let's come back and visit us sometime. You can count on it. You stage ought to be leaving any minute. You wouldn't want to miss it, would you? <clears throat> nice fellow. Yeah. Real nice. Hey, up, man. Up. Well, I guess I better make my rounds. Well, uh, maybe I'll walk away with you. Yeah, come on. Say, how are you and that little girl, Katie, getting along? Nice, very nicely. She, she's a great comfort. Uh-huh. You said you remembered her being nice to you while she was still a drunk. Yes, I remember her sitting and talking to me. Uh, uh, she's a sweet child. She really is. Nice. Yes. Did you tell her much about yourself? I mean, about uh, uh, who you really was? Mm, I really don't remember what we talked about. Why? Oh, just curious. Come to think of it, um, I, I remember showing her some of my old clippings. Uh -huh. Yeah. Them clippings that uh, was in the wallet that you lost, huh? Yeah. Well, that means you must have lost that wallet after you got here in Waco. You know something? 
that that that, uh, that fellow that impersonated me must have found that wallet here. Huh? Yeah, something like that. Well, it's a thing of the past now. I don't suppose we ever will know that fellow's real name. Should we check out a few saloons? No, you go ahead, kid. All this fresh air has made me kind of drowsy. Of course. Don't overdo it. Oh, don't worry, I won't. I just wanted to ride out and take a few things to a sick friend. Well, she get you there with the swiftness of the wind. Oh, good. Oh, dear. Uh, but is there something wrong? Yes. There was a basket of food I wanted to take. I think I left it on the bar. Would you like me to fetch it for you? Oh, would you, Tom? That would be so kind of you. I'd be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Thank you. It's a heap more valuable than lifting a man's wallet now, ain't it? I, I just can't believe it. Well, are you going to tell him the truth or shall I? Kid, don't listen to him. It's all a pack of lies. You can believe me. You know you can believe me. He can believe his eyes a whole lot better. Here's the money, kid. She had it all the time. Kid, it's a mistake. It's all a mistake. Well, I've, I've been your friend even before you were Marshal. Yeah, she was your friend once she found out you were the Baltimore kid. Then she lifted your credentials so her boyfriend could use them to recruit a gang. She was just using your kid, that's all. All right, so I was using him. He was nothing but an old drunk anyway. But what about all of you? Now you leave us out of this, Missy. Oh, no, you're such great ones for the truth. Well, why don't you tell him the whole truth? You've all been covering up for him without his knowing it. Now, why would you do a thing like that? What's in it for you? Yeah. Now, how come you kept it from the kid? Everybody in town knows about it. Those cowboys came in the saloon and talked about how you had them all covered while the kid thought he was facing them down. That's enough. Oh, it ain't half enough, mister. Because all the tricks in your bag ain't going to help you when Sam Braham brings his gang into town tomorrow morning. Graham? It was his gang rode with the fake kid. And he is coming in tomorrow after that money. You old mossbacks don't stand a chance. Do you hear that, kid? We better make plans to... Well, we never found him. Well, we can't just let it go. We better recheck the same places again. I'm gonna check that saloon at the hotel just one more time. Good evening, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. You're speaking. You want to have it a drink in private? Oh, I wouldn't think of doing a thing to like that. This isn't for me. The marshal sent me to fetch it. Uh huh. You over at your place? Uh, is that? Well, here, I'll take it to him. Hmm? But go on and have a drink on me. Well, that's... He's a fine, decent man you are. Much obliged. <laughs> here. No. I figure I'll need a clear head when it come morning when the Bram gang rides in. You know, you ain't the first man who's wrong about a woman, kid. Is that all I was wrong about, Nash? A woman? 
Well, you we <laughs> No. No. I was wrong in thinking that a new suit and a fresh shave could take me back 20 years. <laughs> there I was, promenading all over town, thinking I had my old magic back. <laughs> thinking everybody respected me again. Well, the important thing is you respected yourself again, kid. It's all I can see you was lacking before was self-respect. Sure, sure. I, I owe a lot to you and the boys for that. And the price you put out for these duds. Well, we just wanted to help you get on your feet, that's all. And they've been kicked out from under me again. And now I'm back where I belong. Nowhere. Now, look, kid. I ain't one to lecture a smart man, and that's what I figure you are. A smart man. Too smart for this. Sure. I'm smart. I'm smart, all right. I'm a smart saloon swamper. That's all I can handle now. There's a lot you can handle once you can face that one fact that, that keeps gnawing at you. You're past your prime. You can never be a, the man you once was. But that don't mean you can't be just as good a man in other ways. Doing what? Delivering papers for Amos? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with delivering papers. Nothing wrong with any job, so long as it's honest. You said it before, kid. You got too much pride, and I agree. What you gotta do is find a decent height. Mm. You try to stand too tall, you want everyone looking up at you. And if they don't, then you fall down in the gutter and let them look down on you. Now, there's a middle ground there, kid, and it's just about a high level, where you can look at the world straight in the face and without shame. Right now, I just assume the world had a kind of a blurry look, Dash. If you don't mind. Yeah, I mind. I mind plenty. But I can't spend the night sitting around here while you wallow in your self-pity. Fine, fine. Well, why don't you and the boys clear out of here? We're all finished anyway. Well, maybe you are, but we ain't. There's a gang riding into town tomorrow for a shootout. And if we leave, there ain't nobody to stop them. Now, maybe that badge don't mean nothing to you. I never know what a ranger to take on a job and then quit when the going got tough. Never? Never. Till now. providing them outlaws come in from the east of town. I wager they will. They'll want the sun behind them and in our eyes. Huh. That won't bother me none. <laughs> we take up our positions right here, do we? George and me got a special job. <laughs> Jason and I have been sitting up all night long, thinking. Hey, George, you take the stable man and his helpers and go fix that hay, would you? All right, Sergeant. Hey, Mac! Come on. Come on with you, George. Now, when they get back and take up their position, that's going to leave me and Amos and you behind the barricade. I'm sorry I couldn't get more men, but there just ain't much civic pride around here anymore. Oh, we got enough. I hope. Right this way, here. There's only this bit here where the marshal is resting. Kid, we hate to disturb you, but we're going to need them bales of hay. Go ahead. Here we are. Here. I have a mountain of a doubt in fact.
I've heard a newspaper editor spin on a dangerous assignment, but this is downright ridiculous. Oh, cheer up, English. Just think how you can write a first-hand account. Yeah, I know, but... Here they come. Now that don't bother us none, old timer. I reckon we got more blood to spare than you have. Let's take them, boys. Yeah! Welcome, kid. Guess once you're a ranger, you don't stop. Not while you're perpendicular. Amos! You better see the George. Dry. run through a man's head in one night. This morning, a word turned up I haven't thought of for years. Brazos. Dear friends, I thank you all for coming here today to pay tribute to the Baltimore kid. He was our friend and our comrade in arms. He's a whole lot 
more I could say about him, but I reckon that that marking on the gravestone says it all. Now, most of his life was doing good for others. And I'm mighty glad the dear Lord saw fit to, to lead the kid back to his rightful place before the end. That place was alongside of us, just like we're standing here alongside of him now. And in a way, you know, it's kind of fitting that of all of us, the kid was the first to go. He, well, he, he always did like to lead the way. Rangers, may you rest in, in peace. Don't you worry about the kids' obituary. All right, a good one. You do that, Amos. May your road be smooth. Thank you. go. Splendid, kid. You should have been there. I'm glad I wasn't, all things considered. Nash did you real proud, kid. Almost made me cry. Well, the important thing is, the Baltimore kid is dead and buried, with the kind of respect he deserved. Now you don't have to worry about living up to the past reputation. I suppose Nash is right, but I'm going to miss the kid a little bit. Oh, he'll be remembered. I hope so. Well, anyway, I'll be starting all over again with something I've been doing all my life. Wait a minute. You ain't gonna start ranging again. Oh, no. No, no. No, I, I'm gonna open up a little gun shop. Somewhere up north, maybe California. I may not be able to handle them as well as I used to. But I can sure still fix them. Yeah, and you'll do just fine, too. Well, rangers, it's time we split up. But we'll all get together again. If maybe one of us gets in trouble and yells, Brazos. Brazos! After all, how much trouble can a man get into? I gotta go home and get married. Hey, let's all go back to Jason's wedding and give him some morale support. Yeah. Brazos! Brazos! Yeah! Brazos! Thank uh you. -huh.